outside of you. And Father God, here we are, the children of the Lord, listening at the feet of our King. It is the most amazing thing that uh, the earth is just one speck of dust in the universe, but you look upon us uh, among billions and billions of people. You look upon us, Father God, and you care for us. It is an amazing thing to think that you actually care for me. Uh, what is man and who am I that you are mindful of me and that you would actually hear my words, hear my prayers, and heed my prayers, dear God. It is a relationship that I can't even fathom except for in the goodness of the Lord God, my King. You are the only one that even conceive of these types of things. So Father, um, I bless you and I thank you for um, even, uh, even considering me. I thank you for hearing my prayers. I thank you for being here with this group of people you are the only one who could be seated on the throne and you can see everything that's going on in the universe, but here you are right here present with us and we know that you're here. We feel your presence, dear God. We feel the love of God and we experience the love of God in, in each other. We experience the love of God in our fellowship. We experience the love of God personally in our own hearts according to the sweet spirit that you poured out on us. So have your way this morning. Uh, speak a fresh word to us. May it be the word that we particularly needed to hear. Correct us, Father God. We, are, we stand uh, willing and ready and, and anxious that you would put us on the right path so that we could know that we are pleasing to you and walking in the way that we ought to walk, dear God. Um, bless us and help us this morning, dear God. We confess our sins before you. Uh, we ask you to wash us clean this morning as we stand before you. We want to lift up clean hearts and clean hands and a sweet, pure praise to you this morning. So sanctify this church, set us apart to your, unto yourself, dear God, everywhere on the face of the earth this, this, this morning, dear God, today that men, where men and women have their hands lifted to heaven and their eyes looking to Jesus. Father God, answer us, Father God, when we cry and let us know that you're near, Father God. All we need to know is that you are near. And if you are near us, dear God, we have and we are the victory of God. So I thank you for this people. I thank you, dear God. Uh, now speak to us today. Here we are at the feet of Jesus Christ, where we want to be. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Joy of 
praise within you. Come on, let the inner praise arise up in you right now. Huh. Come on, say this. Lord, I'm going to dance for you. Lord, I'm going to sing for you. Lord, I'm going to worship you. Walking around these walls I thought by now they'd fall But you have never failed me yet Waiting for change to come Knowing the battles for you have never failed me yet. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never failed me yet I know the night won't last Your word will come to pass My heart will sing your prayer again Jesus you're still enough keep me within your love my heart will sing your praise again your promise still stands great is your faithfulness faithfulness I'm still in your hands this is my confidence you never failed me yet
summer still stands Great is your faithfulness Faithfulness I'm still in your hands This is my confidence You've never failed me Father, we thank you for the opportunity to lift up sweet praises to your name. Um, you deserve it. And everything within us just lifts up and looks up and reaches up and opens up to give everything that we have to the one who deserves it. So we love you, Father. Receive our praises. Our attention is on Jesus. Speak, Lord God. Lead us in the way we ought to go. We need you, Father God. Pour out upon us all that we need, and all of that is found in the Holy Spirit. Touch each and every one today. Open our ears. Open the eyes of our heart. We're looking to heaven, dear God. Speak to your children. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Give God a shout this morning. Go ahead and give him a shout. He deserves it. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. You are your goodness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for your faith. Amen. Thank you. <clears throat> amen. Amen. Amen, amen beloved. Um, it always takes me a minute to gather myself after worship with, uh, with that lineup of songs. It's just a, um, you know, it kind of touched me in a, in a, in a deep place, especially the, that last song. I'm so, so grateful. It speaks directly to my heart. It speaks directly to, uh, to my life and my testimony. And, uh, and I have seen God move mountains. And I do believe that he will move them again. He'll move them for you. I believe I'll see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I thank you. I thank you, Lord. I thank you so much. Um, so, uh, beloved, as, as I said, um, <clears throat> there's been a change in what I want to present to you today because it's important for me to speak directly to you and speak to you prophetically, to speak to you uh, uh, concerning what the Lord has for you right now, right this moment. And I do believe the Lord has a right now, right this moment word for you. If you believe that, I just want you to take your hands right now, just where you guys are, as an act of worship and set them before you. And, uh, and just, just speak to the Lord. Just I give you, give, you, give you 10 seconds here. Speak to the Lord and say, Lord, let this be for me, fresh bread from the ovens of heaven. Let this be for me, fresh water from the fountain. Um, and refresh me, Lord. Speak directly to my heart, directly to my life through the word this morning. Go ahead and ask him. Go ahead and ask him. In Jesus' name, beloved, as, as you have asked, freely receive. Um, I, I want to talk about the word that I need to hear, the word that you need to hear. As I said to you, and we, we've noted many times, um, there are many, many voices vying for attention from your ears in the world, uh, more so than any other time in the world, um, in, 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 this, in this world, in, in history. Uh, there are more ways for voices to reach our ears and, and, and visions to reach our eyes and uh, through technology and through what's available to us in communication today. And, 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 that, and that calls for you and me as children of God to be very, very discerning because the, um, it is an honor. It is an honor and it is a blessing and it is a calling to be able to speak authoritatively into the hearts, into the lives of God's children. And um, I believe that there's an anointing. I know that there's an anointing. The Holy Spirit gives a particular anointing that those who he particularly touches to speak into the lives of his children. And there are many, many, many speakers, but the anointing is more particular than that. It is much more than a gifting, uh, so to speak. It is a relationship. And so that gifting is activated and it is it, by the Holy Spirit himself who gives to those who he has anointed to speak into the lives of his children give to us the right now, right here, rhema word of God, a uh, word that, that, that applies directly to your life, directly to your situation, directly to what God wants to say to you today in a very personal way. And uh, so it, it, it is incumbent upon those of us who, who take it upon ourselves uh, to recognize the anointing on our lives and to speak into the hearts of the, the children of God, to do so judiciously, to do so with great, great consideration, because God will hold us responsible for that. 
Uh, it, it says very clearly in James 3.1, I would that, hey, James says, I would not that many of you become teachers because yours is the stricter judgment. And you are, he goes on to say, and I'm paraphrasing, of course, he goes on to say that it is your responsibility to handle your life and your anointing uh, of the ministry that God has given you in such a way <clears throat> that you uh, are walking in the kind of wisdom that is available to you, that God makes available to you so that you speak well because this tongue that all of us possess is a, is a, is a world, of, it, 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 is a, it is a fire. Uh, uh, and, and if we are not very careful at, uh, to develop a, 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 the kind of self-control and, and the kind of a relationship with the Lord, that which we get from a relationship with the Lord that, that makes the words that we speak, um, make the words that we speak, uh, actually we can say that this is God speaking through us. If we don't conduct ourselves in the kind of maturity uh, developing the kind of maturity and developing in the kind of um the kind of uh, uh what, what am i looking for um w w let me just say this it's important for me to know that i will stand before the lord if i and, and give an account if i say to you that this is a word from god for you so uh uh but, but to thank god that he is merciful he's gracious and he takes the responsibility um, for my life, and if I will submit myself to him, he will give me the authority from heaven that I need to speak authoritatively into your life because you are the most important thing to God in the universe. And I know that because his son gave his life for you. And his son did not give his life for the stars. His son did not give his life for the earth. His son did not give his life for any other thing but you. So I know that you're what's most important to God. So it's most important to God that I speak well to you and then when I say this is a prophetic word from God, that it actually be. So open your ears. I believe that this will be a help to you. I believe it'll be a blessing to you. And I believe it'll be a guide to you as you go forward in these days. And I don't know if I'm talking to anybody <laughs> that that, that uh, doesn't need to hear from God, uh, need a direct rhema word from God. I believe that that's why we're here today, that we believe we are going to hear from the Lord if we will set ourselves before him. So, Father, speak and bless the people whose ears are listening, whose eyes are open, and who are willing to walk according to your revelation. In Jesus' name, amen. And uh, so, Jackie, I instructed you to um, uh, to, to note uh, 2 Kings chapter 22, verses 6 through um, I don't remember the last verse, but I'm going to actually start. I'm going to start before uh, verse 6. Uh, and I just want you to listen to my reading until we get to verse six, and then Jackie will put from that point on the reading on the screen. I'm sorry, um, Pastor, I, really quick. Was it second or yes. first Kings? First Kings. I'm yeah. Sorry. Just double checking. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> Keep me <it> straight. <laughs> first Kings chapter 22, verse one. Uh, and I'm going to uh, read, and, and, and for your hearing, I received the word of God. It said, now three years passed without war between Syria and Israel. Then it came to pass in the third year that Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, went down to visit the king of Israel. And the king of Israel said to his servants, do you know that Ramoth Gilead is ours, but we hesitate to take it out of the hand of the king of Syria? So he said to Jehoshaphat, will you go with me to fight at Ramoth Gilead? Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, I am as you are, my people as your people, my horses as your horses. Also, Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, please inquire for the word of the Lord today. Inquire for the word of the Lord today. Just to, to, set, to set this conversation up, Jehoshaphat was the king of the southern uh, uh, tribes of Judah and Benjamin, and, and Ahab was the king of the uh, ten northern tribes, as you know, that the, the the uh, kingdom of Israel had been split uh, under uh, Rehoboam, uh, Solomon's son, and uh, Israel had two kings because they had two kingdoms, the one kingdom split into two. And they were really uh, at, at war with each other pretty much up until the time of Jehoshaphat when uh, the, the, the uh, kings, the families of the kings of Judah and the families of the kings of, of uh, in Samaria, of the 10 tribes in Samaria, they came together and they finally made peace with each other. So now they're working together. The problem with that is this God had separated the kings of the, the the kingdom of Judah unto himself, and he still looked upon them with favor, and they were good kings uh, in Judah, and there was never a good king, there was never an acceptable king to the Lord in the in the in the northern kingdom, and Ahab was one of those kings. He was an evil man, 
And he was a man that Jehoshaphat probably should have avoided um, rather than, than than uniting himself with. But the kingdom had, was united in this way. That, that, that there was friendship now between the, the king of Judah and the kings in, in, of the northern tribe of Samaria. And uh, so they were planning to go to war together. Jehoshaphat said, my soldiers are as your soldiers. I am as you. I will go with you. We will fight together. But Jehoshaphat, because there still was... Uh, Jehoshaphat was what the, what the scriptures called a good king, a king that um, that loved the Lord and that walked with the Lord uh, uh, mostly. Uh, I believe he was unwise in his in in, in, be, in being complicit with uh, Ahab in anything at all. But uh, but there was there was peace between them at the time, and so they joined together in an alliance. Uh, and it it wasn't it wasn't a, a well advised thing, but there was Jehoshaphat, the good king. Uh, but still, he was doing something that was not uh, that was ill advised. And partnering with Ahab, uh, partnering with the, the Ahabs of the world on anything, by the way, is ill-advised, beloveds. The ends do not justify the means in the kingdom. And so when we partner with those who are ungodly, and even to accomplish what we consider a godly end, that is always, always a problem because the ends do not justify the means. And here Jehoshaphat will find that he's putting himself in a difficult position by his alliance with Ahab. Uh, and that's going to be shown very clearly. But that's not the point that I want to make with you today. I want you to hear what the word of God is saying to you um, as we continue uh, to read this passage. So, Jackie, if you'll start putting up verse six, we'll continue the story. So then the king of Israel gathered the prophets together, about 400 men, and said to them, shall I go against Ramoth Gilead to fight or shall I refrain? So they said, go, for the Lord will deliver it into the hands of the king. And Jehoshaphat said to him, is there not still a prophet of the Lord here that we may inquire of him? In other words, all of Ahab's prophets were not prophets of the Lord. They were prophets of Baal. They were prophets of Ashera. Um, they were prophets of, of they, they served other kings and they did not serve the living God. And so his prophets, of course, were, were telling him, king, go and conquer, go and conquer, because they truly, they knew that's what the king wanted to hear. And they prophesied for pay. They prophesied to tell the king what he wanted to hear, not to tell him the truth of the Lord, because they didn't know the Lord. And that's why Jehoshaphat said, is there not still a prophet of the true and living God here that we may ask of him? And so we pick up there, verse 8. So the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, there is still one man, Micaiah, Micaiah I'm sorry, the son of Imla, by whom we may inquire of the Lord. But I hate him because he does not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. Oh, go, go, go figure. <laughs> and Jehoshaphat said, let not the king say such things. Then the king of Israel called an officer and said, bring, bring Micaiah, the son of Imla, quickly. The king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, having put on their robes and sat each on his throne at a threshing floor at the entrance of the gate of Samaria. And all the prophets prophesied before them. Now Zedekiah, the son of Chiana, uh, had made horns for himself. And he said, thus says the Lord, with these you shall gore the Syrians until they are destroyed. And all the prophets prophesied so, saying, Go up to Ramoth Gilead and prosper, for the Lord will deliver it into the king's hands. Then the messenger who had gone to call Micaiah spoke to him, saying, Now listen, the words of the prophets with one accord encourage the king. Please let your words be like the word of one of them and speak encouragement. And Micaiah said, As the Lord lives, whatever the Lord says to me, that I will speak. Then he came to the king, and the king said to him, Micaiah, shall we go to war with Ramoth Gilead, or shall we refrain? And he said to him, go and prosper, for the Lord will deliver it into the hands of the king. So the king said to him, how many times shall I make you swear that you shall tell me nothing but the truth in the name of the Lord? Then he said, I saw all Israel scattered on the mountains as sheep that have no shepherd. And the Lord said, these have no master. Let each return to his house of peace. And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, did I not tell you he would not prophesy good concerning me, but evil? Then Micaiah said, therefore, hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne and all the hosts of heaven standing by on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, who will persuade Ahab to go up that he may fall at Ramoth Gilead? So one spoke in this manner and another spoke in that manner. Then a spirit came forward and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. The Lord said to him, in what way? So he said, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And the Lord said, you shall persuade him and also prevail. Go out and do so. Therefore, look, the Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these prophets of yours. And the Lord has declared disaster against you. 
Now Zedekiah, the son of Jeanna, went near and struck Micaiah on the cheek and said, which way did the spirit from the Lord go for me to speak to you? And Micaiah said, indeed, you shall see on that day when you go into the inner chamber to hide. So the king of Israel said, take Micaiah and return him to Ammon, the governor of the city, and to Joash, the king's son, and say, thus says the king, put this fellow in prison and feed him with the bread of affliction and water of affliction until I come in peace. But Micaiah said, if you ever return in peace, the Lord has not spoken by me. And he said, take heed, all you people. Father, may there be a blessing on the reading, the hearing, the declaring, the believing, and mostly the doing of the word of the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Beloved, there's a lot there, and I think you follow the story well. I'm sure you did. Uh, you, you you had a, a just a, a multiplicity of of prophets speaking one thing, but you had one prophet, Micaiah, who stood up and spoke the word of the Lord. Um, I believe that we are seeing so much of that in our world today. You know, one of the benefits of uh, of uh, being around for uh, the years that I've been, I turned 65 in December. One of the benefits of being around for 65 years and being involved intimately in the church uh, for that long I believe it gives um, you know, the experience and the time and the, um, the, the, the actual involvement in the things that God is doing among his people. It just gives you a perspective that you couldn't have otherwise, along with the uh, fierce attention to the word of God, uh, the house of God, and the closet of prayer. Um, that's how the kingdom works. And God gives those who are connected to him in that way, who are related to him in that way. He just gives us insight. He gives us foresight. He gives us hindsight. He gives us vision. And uh, that's what prophets uh, uh, provided for, for the people. Prophets were called seers uh, back in the day of days, back in Samuel's day in particular, the Bible says, uh, tells us in 1 Samuel, prophets were called seers. Why? Because they see. And everything uh, about a man can be determined by what he sees. Everything can be determined by a woman, uh, by what she sees. The pure in heart, Jesus tells us on the on the, on, on the uh, uh, in the Sermon on the Mount, he tells us the pure in heart will see God. According to the purity of our heart, according to the purity of our devotion, that determines how clearly we see God and that determines how clearly we see truth. So it is really not upon us to see, it's upon us to present to God a pure heart, to ask God to purify our hearts. And he provides vision to pure hearts. And that has always been the, the true foundation of any prophetic ministry. Prophetic ministry is not given to the church primarily so that we can know what's going to happen next. Prophetic ministry is given primarily to the church so we can be prepared whatever happens next. God does not always, does not always, in fact, most times doesn't tell us what he's going to do next. He will speak to us about seasons. He will speak to us and prepare us for what's coming next. But God doesn't give any of us a detailed account of what's going to happen tomorrow or the day after or the day after the day after. But he does speak to men and women through whom he, through whom he speaks, uh, whose hearts are pure so that we can speak in such a way that the people of God are prepared for whatever comes. And that we're prepared in such a way uh, because we have been encouraged by the prophets of God to hear God according to his word, hear God according to the fellowship, hear God according to the closet of prayer, the communication that we have with him on a continual basis, heart to heart, ear to his mouth, at the feet of Jesus, God speaks. And that is the only way that you and I can know when we when we adhere to that truth, when we adhere to that, that, that the tenets of that, those tenets of relationship, that's the only way that we can know that we are hearing and recognizing the truth. And, the, and that the, the, Jesus says, I am the, tr the, the life, the, the way, the truth, and the life. He is the truth. He is the only truth. We get past the facts. We get past the, th the, the facts that we can gather because we can gather all the facts that we want to. And facts do not make truth. Facts do not make truth. We can fashion facts. We can gather facts to make whatever point we want to make. And that's what many do. But facts are not truth. Truth is the eternal word of God. Jesus Christ is the truth and everything that is truth that, that considers the 360 of, of, of all of the subject, everything has to do with any subject. It has to come from God because he's the only one who sees everything 
from every angle and who knows the conditions of every heart that's involved. He's the only one who can tell you exactly what happened and why it happened and when it happened and where it happened and have and that there'd be absolutely nothing that can be disputed. God's words are eternal truth. And when God speaks to us, he's speaking us according to his own counsel, the truth. And the degree to which we apply ourselves to that, the degree to which we go to him for wisdom, the degree to which we go and take him our hearts on a daily basis and say, Lord, cleanse my heart. The degree to which we come to him at the cross is the degree to which we can speak to us and tell us the truth and that we actually will walk in, that we can actually handle the truth. Because I don't know about you, but I don't always want to hear the truth. There are times where I want to hear what I want to hear, and I hear according to my own temperament and to my own beliefs and according to the own set of facts, which support what it is that I am, am likely, I am most likely to believe and most likely to receive, most likely to accept. If I accept truth according to my own experience, then my my uh, capacity for truth will be small. If I accept truth according to my own uh, to, to my own worldview, uh, my my acceptance of truth, my my appreciation of truth, apprehension of truth will be small. But the Lord gives us the Holy Spirit, and He gives us faith, because our our spirit is the only part of us that has the capacity to receive the truth. If I try to receive the truth and I try and, and I try to, to bind it up in my in my soul, in my mind, in my emotions, in my will, my truth, my appreciation, apprehension of truth will be as small or as large as I am. Some some people's hearts and apprehension are larger than others, but none of us, uh, as I'm sure I'm sure you can surmise, none of us are large enough in ourselves to receive the truth. The only thing that makes us able to receive the truth is the presence of the Holy Spirit who speaks to our spirits and our faith is elastic enough to keep growing and to keep, keep growing so that God can continue to pour out truth and keep expanding our horizons. It's the only thing about us that can receive the truth about Jesus Christ. You're not saved because you're a good person. You're not saved because you weren't as bad as those people over there. You're not as, not saved because you're anything. You're not saved because of anything intrinsic in you. You're not saved because of your nationality. You're not saved because of where you were born. You're not saved because your parents were saved. God does not have grandchildren. You're not saved because your parents were saved. You're not saved because your pastor saved. You're not even well taught because your pastor is a great teacher. You're well taught because you receive what Jesus Christ has spoken to you and you obey it. That's what it means to be well taught. That's what it means to really hear God. That's what it means to know God. And that's what it means to be in a place where you know that you are hearing the truth and you are walking in the truth. There are Christians, as you know, that, that believe in some areas diametrically opposite of what you believe. So obviously we both can't believing, be believing the truth if we're believing diametrically opposite things about very, very important things. But I'm not here to, to place us in a position where we're the ones that hear the truth and everybody else hears something less. What I'm here to do is here to point out to you is there's a propensity in us. There's a, there's a temptation to listen for and to hearken to what we want to hear and what we agree with and what we think. I have that temptation and you have that temptation. So how is it that you and I can stand before the Lord and truly hear what he has to say without filtering it, without it having to filter itself through any of the of what we set between us and him. How is it that we move, we remove everything in our thinking and everything in our ability to receive from God, remove all of that and just receive the truth of God that's revealed to us in Jesus Christ. Therefore, when the voices speak to us, we know and we recognize the truth. I believe we're living in a season of lies like I have never seen before. Um, I, I believe that we, I, I, there, there are certain of us have, who, who walk in a, 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 re, a reality of their own making. And so that up is down and down is up and bad is good and good is bad and acceptable is acceptable and, 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 and unacceptable is, is acceptable. And, 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 and these people are paraded before us in our media day in and day out, um, who are clearly, clearly living in a, a truth of, the, of their own concoction. And they may be very, very good at presenting it, very, very good at, at convincing people that this lie is the truth, but a lie is a lie no matter who tells it and who believes it. 
and it's a sad thing that to, to be a part of the Church of Jesus Christ. I'm speaking of America, what I know, that that is easily, easily pulled off into kind of in, in, into a, a world of lies by liars, uh, who I believe very, very much are empowered by spirits that are sent to do one thing and one thing only, and that is to get the Church of Jesus Christ off track and to get us focusing on anything and everything but Jesus Christ. Now, Jesus Christ doesn't look like you. He doesn't think like you. He doesn't act like you. His ways are not like yours and not like, not like mine. If there's an idea that came from me, it is not God's idea. <laughs> and that doesn't mean that every idea I have is terrible or evil or anything like that. It just means that if it comes from me, it didn't come from him. The Bible puts it this way. Your ways are not my ways. My ways are higher than yours. They always have been. They always will be. The Bible also makes it very clear there is none good. No, not one. None of us, none of us can come to God or should come to the people of God. Uh, founding, putting, uh, laying a foundation of our own wisdom, our own goodness, even our own apprehension of wisdom and goodness. What we have to do, if we're given the opportunity to speak into the hearts of the people of God, what we have to do is to, is to conduct that relationship, to walk in relationship with God, that we can say to the people of God and truly say that I have stood before God, I stand before him as a lifestyle, I listen to God, I hear him, and I'm only sharing with you what he has shared with me, according to the word of God, according to the counsel of God. And there is fruit to that kind of ministry, beloved. The fruit is the fruit of peace, the fruit of joy, the fruit of love, the fruit of long suffering. If you do grace, love looks like something. And love listens to God because he is a God of love and love speaks that way. And it, and it tells the truth and it will not compromise the truth with any agenda whatsoever. So we see in this passage, in this chapter here in First Kings, we see agenda and we see prophets. Uh, first of all, uh, it, it, be careful once again who you allow to prophesy into your life. Be careful who you listen to. Be careful of the podcast. Be careful of, of, uh, of the preachers. Be careful of the singers. Be careful of the music you listen to. If you're listening to these things um, uh, with the heart of hearing from God, be careful of who you're hearing from. And God gives a very, very clean, clear picture of those we are to hear from. We are to hear from and hearken to the men and women of God he sets before us who are called by God who are called by God and God himself and have the fruit of that and the evidence of that, and that they are the ones that he charges with speaking encouragement and love and pointing the people of, of God to God. I don't point you to what I say. I pray that what I say points you to him. And when you go and take this word, this word and any word that I speak to you, and you go and you read your Bible and any and everything that I say to you, uh, it will match up. And, and will line up with what is directly spoken in the word of God. So here it is, Ahab. Ahab was at a disadvantage to begin with because he didn't know God. And yet he's inquiring about things that only God can know. So beloved, do not listen to people who don't know God about God. Listen to people who you know, who you can testify, this man knows the Lord, this woman knows the Lord. This man is consistent in the things of the Lord. There's no, there's no, don't bank anything on any human perfection. Don't bank anything on any man's success or any man, the size of any woman's ministry or how many people they get to speak to that. That's, that's between God and them. But you, because you are committed to God in his word and his house and in prayer, you know, the voice of the Lord. So we're starting off with the fact that Ahab did not know the Lord. That he was, yet he was inquiring about things that only the Lord could know. Shall I go to war? Shall I put my life on the line? Shall I put the life of my nation on the line? It was a consequential thing. And he had, he, the only wisdom that he showed was that, uh, that, uh, that I, need some, I need to have some confidence that this is what I need to do. But what he had already set himself up for was failure because he had already built up his own, uh, his own fan club, his own spiritual fan club who were going to tell him what he wanted to hear. And none of them had the courage and none of them had the relationship with God that Micaiah had because when Micaiah was called, Micaiah knew the Lord. That's why Jehoshaphat asked 
do are there any prophets of the Lord God Almighty here? Not Baal, not Ashura, not not any of the other, not not at not, not any of the other gods of the land, but the God of Israel. Is there a prophet? And of course, Ahab hated him because that prophet told the truth, and Ahab hated the truth. My question to you, beloved, is, is, is do we love the truth or do we really love what we want the truth to be? Do we, do we really hear God for what he's saying or, we, or will we filter what God is saying through our own worldview? And let me say, your worldview and my worldview, no matter how broad, it's minuscule. You can put it on the head of a pen and have room to dance because none of us know, <laughs> know anything more than what our experience and what the, what God has allowed us to see. God, none of us know any more than that other than what God shows us because we are obedient to him and he shows it to us for the benefit of his people. I believe there are those who, whom God speaks and speaks very clearly. I believe when a parent speaks into the, to the hearts of their children and that parent has gone to God and received godly wisdom and godly authority to speak into the hearts of the children, those parents are instruments of the Lord. The Bible tells us that very clearly. That's why the first commandment with, with a promise is to honor your mother and your father, obey your mother and your father in this world, because, because if you want to live long and be blessed, it is the first commandment with a promise attached to it. You will be blessed and live long. And everybody I know wants long life and blessing. So it starts with obeying your earthly parents, not because they're perfect, but because God has anointed parents for caring for the next generation. for So he's anointed you for that. He's given you the spirit. He's given you his spirit and his wisdom so, uh, in order to raise your children wisely. And if you are a wise parent uh, on any level, your children are wise for listening to you. Even when they're adults, they're wise for listening to you and heeding you and respecting you. So there's anointing on, on, on the order of the, of, of the things that God has set up. And there's an anointing in the church when the man of God, the woman of God, the set man, the set man, the woman of God who God has placed before the people, when that person, when that person takes their relationship with God seriously and stays in fierce, continual contact with the Lord, then you can trust that when you're hearing from them, you are hearing from the Lord, not anything of their own, but what God has given them. And I thank God for the pastors over the years that I've sat under. I thank God for the men and women who have blessed me and poured into me. And I had sense enough to listen. <laughs> and here it is, Ahab. Um, he, he, you and I can, can, if we find ourselves listening to folks that agree with us about everything, let me just say that our circles are probably too tight. If we find ourselves listening to scornful people, for people who have nothing good to say about anything than uh, 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 any, any any others who believe anything other than what they believe, because you know people who are very strong in their beliefs, but they can't accept anything that anyone else believes without an argument. Uh, you know, you know people who have so much to say about a particular subject, but they can't listen to anything that they, they haven't already themselves accepted. They can't hear you if you present any other point of view than the one that they already have. You know, God save us from that. And at the same time, you know, God, Lord, give us ears to hear and recognize truth when we hear it. Give us ears to hear and recognize spiritual authority when we hear it. You know, God is going to hold you and me responsible for how we, how we responded to the people he sent into our lives to speak into our lives. God will send a man or woman into your life that is more mature than you. God will send a man and woman into your life that walks with him a, a, a little, little more closely than you. God will send somebody into your life that, that, that he has ordained to be a blessing to you. And he will judge you for how you dealt with that person. God will send a person in your life to lead you in the way you ought to go. That person isn't better than you. <laughs> like he doesn't love that person more than, than he does you. Uh, that person is not his favorite and you're less favorite. That's not how God works. God doesn't have favorites. God has intimates. And he will send somebody that has a more intimate relationship with him than you do. And he does that for your benefit. And therefore, it behooves us to know how to listen, especially when we disagree. The fact that we disagree with the pastor means nothing 
It is not the basis of any decision that you make spiritually. God did not send someone into your life to speak to you with whom you are to agree about everything. God did not, if that's the basis for your relationship, then it is not a godly relationship that you have to agree with the pastor, agree with what he does, agree with what he says, agree with what he's, that's not, that never was the deal. Remember, I remember uh, over the years of, of pastoring, I've, I've run into that many times, but those same people, I remember when they were humble. I remember when they were just glad to be in the number. <laughs> I remember when they were just glad to, to, to have an opportunity to serve God in the house and they came early and they left late because they were helping. And then we get to a point where we find ourselves at odds with spiritual authority just because we would do something different or we think differently. And we, we forget that there was a time when we were just humble to say, thank you, God, for even giving me a pastor. Thank you for even saving my soul. Thank you for speaking the truth. And as long as we walk in humility, beloveds, we keep ourselves in a position to hear the Lord. And we keep ourselves, and that's what's most important. We never put ourselves in a position that Ahab put himself in where the man of God stood before him and told him the truth, and he could not and would not hear it. Beloveds, be careful on what you will not hear. I'm not saying open your ears to everything and everyone that claims to be from, that's not my point at all. God has set you in a fellowship. He set you in the house. He has instructed you in his word. He has set you, uh, in, he has given you a closet, a prayer closet. And the question about the prayer closet is how often do I visit it? <laughs> how often do I talk to the Lord? And if you and I talk to the Lord and we have a ongoing conversant relationship with the Lord uh, in prayer and in the word of God, we will recognize the men and women who he's blessed us with to lead us in the way we ought to go. Now, there is a, a stubbornness that is natural in all of us. We all want to go the way we want to go. We all think we know. Be careful, beloveds, what you think you know. Be careful about that because Ahab thought he knew. And Satan supplied him with enough witness, enough witnesses to where to him a lie became the truth. See, there are things going on in the invisible. And that's what this that's what this passage makes clear. There are things going on in the invisible. There was conversation going on in heaven because Ahab had been judged. And now the only question was just how was it going to work itself out? And the, and, and, and the spirits presented themselves to the Lord. And one demon spirit presented itself to the Lord and said, I'll go down and I'll put a lying spirit in the mouth of all of his prophets. And that's exactly what he did. Why? Because Ahab has surrounded himself with lying prophets. And let me say that I want to be very clear. And I want to say this firmly but gently. So much of the church has surrounded itself and involved itself in lying prophets, lying political prophets, lying on, on, on social issues, lying on, on, on cultural issues, just lying spirits who, who have set themselves as arbiters of righteousness, judges in the earth, when God did not send us here to judge any man. We judge all things. We judge no man. We judge all things. We judge no man. And God has set before us righteousness. But when we go after what we think is right, and I don't, beloveds, you can be as right as rain about a particular issue. But when you go after your ends, when it comes to that issue, when you get off of your knees and you get strident and you get and you start using the world's tools in order to accomplish what you consider something godly, you are you are so far out of line. You're setting yourself up for the same identical deception that Ahab set himself up for, because then you find yourself in cahoots with the kind of people that God would have you to avoid. There are many people who get an opportunity to get in pulpits and speak in churches and gatherings of Christians who have absolutely no business speaking into the life of the church. There's this agenda. Their desire is for power and their desire is for success and their desire is anything but godly. And your desire and my desire, if we're walking with the Lord, is to see many sons and daughters come to glory. At the end of the day, beloveds, if there's any argument in the church, if there's any controversy, if there's anything we have to work out, let it be how it is that we get the pure gospel, the pure water, the bread of life 
to hungry and thirsty and needy people. Let that be the only controversy. And that controversy is not really a truly controversy. It's just a matter of working out, uh, working out how things get done that we get the gospel to a hungry world that needs and does, that, that, that deeply, deeply needs to know Jesus. And when we let any other thing, any other subject, I mean, our church is divided, church, the Church of America is divided over all kinds of things, over race and over masks and over, over gathering or not gathering, over, over this, over who you vote for and, and, and that kind of thing, because there's so many voices to which we've exposed ourselves, which make those things the point. But here's the kingdom of God, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. That's the kingdom of God. It's told, we're told that in the book of Romans. That is the kingdom of God. And your God is a God of love. And love looks like something. It does not look like the lying voices to which we've opened ourselves to. It doesn't sound like them. It doesn't look like them. It doesn't hate like them. It doesn't fight like them. And it doesn't promote itself like them. What it does is it sets itself before the Lord and anyone, once again, who God sends us to his church to speak, he sends to speak to edify and to purify his church. It is my desire not to see you vote a certain way, not to see you think a certain way. It is my desire to see you in God's house, vital fellowship with God and believers, in God's word, a vital relationship with God according to his word, and in the closet of prayer a vital conversation with God where you pour out your heart before the Lord daily and he pours his heart into you. Any other agenda, any other agenda is going to lead you astray. Any other agenda is going to lead you astray because any other agenda is going to settle itself. It's going to settle your energies and your time and your thoughts on some end that we can accomplish. Now, when Ahab asked for the man of God to come, the man of God said, okay, I'll, okay, I know what Ahab is after. I, the man of God already knew that his word was not going to be accepted. He was told by one of Ahab's cronies, uh, uh, his, one, one of his prophets, hey, make sure you agree with the rest of us because everybody's encouraging the king. And here it is, Micaiah, not only is he trying to, uh, 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 he's going to tell the truth, but he's going to share a message that will save the king's life. But yet, the king had set himself, and his day had come. His day had come. And Ahab, uh, had, God had given him grace, and God had given him uh, forbearance because he was an evil man. But there was a day when God makes a judgment, and God had made that judgment. The judgment he made was Ahab will not hear my voice. And that is going to be the determinative factor in his life and his death. He will not hear my voice. I do not want God to ever have to come to the conclusion that I'm a lost cause when it comes to hearing his voice, that I simply will not hear. So be careful about the voices that you hear and be careful about the message that you will not hear because you don't agree with it or because you don't like it or because you think something different or because someone else says something different or you think a different way. If I think it, it's not God's thought. God's thoughts do not rise up from me. God's thoughts are poured down upon me. Every day I wake up, and uh, usually most days, uh, uh, let me say, I, I wake up, and the first thing I do is I read the Proverbs. I read that, that the chapter of Proverbs that corresponds to the day of the month. And today is the 23rd, I think. And, and, and so today will be the 23rd proverb. And because every day, I realize, I've realized that every day I wake up, I need to get before God and, and specifically, pointedly ask him for his wisdom. I need to get before God and specifically ask him for his wisdom. Because the scripture tells me, the Proverbs tell me, if I ask for it, I'll receive it. And, and the reason I keep doing it, and I've been doing this for more years than I count, it, 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 unless I keep doing it, I'm in danger of wandering from what I already know. And the scripture makes it very clear in the Proverbs that a man that wanders from his place, wanders from his place, 
in his thinking and his doing and in his actions wanders from the place of wisdom will end up in the assembly of the dead. That is a stern warning in the book of Proverbs, the man that wanders from his place. And wandering from his place says this, I said, I can say this, I've been reading the Proverbs uh, nearly every day of my life the last 30 years. I can say that and I say, well, maybe I can take a Proverbs vacation. Cause I mean, now obviously I've read it enough that I can, you know, I, I, I got that, I'm good. Or I can say, I've been reading the scriptures every day of my life for the last 40 years. And I can truly say that. Um, and I can say, well, you know, I can, you know, I'm good with the scriptures. Let me read some other spiritual materials now. And because scriptures, I got down. I can name all the books in order. Or I can I can recite some chapters here and there. I got 20. Oh, I got teachings. I have teachings. I could, they, 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 you know, I could stack them up and it taller than me. I got, I've written books and I've, I've done this stuff. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I can take a spiritual vacation, but that's wandering. And, and any man on a spiritual vacation, any man that at any point decides that the disciplines of the faith, the disciplines of devotion are passe and that we could do something different or do something, do without them, is a man that wanders from his place. And that puts us in a dangerous position because now we put ourselves around voices and people that are not ordained by God that are not according to the scriptures that are right there for us to, to eat and to drink and to be present and accounted for and to be right here, right now. God wants you to have a right here, right now, rhema word relationship with him because this morning you read your Proverbs and you'd be surprised, maybe you won't because you do, many of you walk in this discipline at how, at how often, uh, uh, you know, when there's a, a quandary uh, that, that is set before you that the word of God that you just read this morning or that you read last week or that you read last Thursday or last month, that word of God is there because you have tended to it and it just pops out of you. And that in times when you would be afraid, faith rises up from you. And times when you would be confused, clarity rises up from you. And a time when, when, when you would be afraid, courage rises up from you because that is what you've cultivated. And so therefore, when these lying voices, when these people with agenda, your own agenda rises up to carry you to the left or to the right, you, the, the sweet, still, small voice of the Lord, which you have cultivated through your devotion, puts you right back in the center of God's will. Uh, the psalmist says in Psalm 119, I have hidden your word in my heart so that I might not sin against you. So the way to be sure that I'm not Ahab and I'm not in Ahab's position because the truth is, I'm no better than Ahab. Okay, I'm not a better man than Ahab. There is not a man that's ever walked the earth that I'm a better man than he is. Not one. So I'm not looking at Ahab as if he's a terrible person and I'm not that terrible. You see, that's not the truth. <laughs> and it may be a fact that I'm not as terrible as Ahab. But the truth is, I'm a wretch and I deserve death, and I don't deserve the salvation that God has freely given me. That's the truth. The fact is, I'm saved, I'm sanctified. And and and, and that fact is, is truth. That truth overcomes all the other things that will separate me from God, and it makes me a child of God, and it sets me where I need to be in the spirit, and it will keep me until the day the Lord comes for me. And that's true of you. It's true of you. Keep yourself centered on God's word so that no matter what the enemy says, the enemy will send discouraging spirits to you. He will send those to you to just discourage you. And you may go year after year after year after year in your life being discouraged about certain things and certain people that are important to you. I don't know any saint that's been uh, walked with the Lord for, for very long at all that can't testify that there are some things in my life that if I had any, <laughs> if I if I had it, it, the, the power to change, that I wouldn't change. Everyone has things in their life that they wish were different. I feel sorry for you if you don't, <laughs> because if you don't have that, you don't need the gifts of the spirit. You don't need, you, you don't need the, the, the fruits of the spirit. You don't need the love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, meekness, self-control. If there's nothing in your life that isn't perfect because you're a Christian. Or if there's some things in your in your life which if there's nothing in your life which you don't which which you know that no area in your life for growth. 
if you think you've arrived, if you think you have a handle on, on truth, I feel sorry for you. Because every day, every day, we need to refresh our relationship with the Lord. We need to refresh it because we will be drawn away and wander off according to another man's counsel if we are not totally, totally connected to the Lord a hundred degrees, a hundred percent in the house, in the word, and in his closet. And, and you and I know if the enemy is trying to do anything, he's working on you in those areas. When you decide that you're going to read God's word and you're going to eat the word and you're going to be present in the word, then he does everything he can to make you too busy for the word. When you decide to be in the house and to fellowship and to be a rock solid point of, 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 of life in, in the fellowship, he works against that in any way he can. And then you decide that you're going to pray and you're going to be present with the Lord on a daily basis, uh, then he works against that in every way that he can. Uh, but you already know that. And, and because you know it, you are armored in the armor of God and you are walking and not wandering. Now, Ahab had wandered off after his own desires for pleasure and power. And unfortunately, that's true about far too many who claim the name of the Lord. Fellowships, power, politics, and politics is a particular malady for the church today because it has set itself up as a God. And people who bring politics in churches set themselves up as gods and, and Christians are silly enough to listen to them. Let it not be said that in this house that politics or any political leanings are the determinative factor in anything that we do. You can believe what you believe and vote for who you want to vote for. And that's well and fine with me. And I will do the same. But when we come together, righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Spirit, that's the kingdom of God. And that's the Father's house. And let it be so, beloved, is that the enemy can send whatever discouragement he can send uh, whatever lies. He can send anything our way that he likes because he's going to do that. And you can be guaranteed that Satan is going to be Satan. He is never going to be anything less than that. And he is the arch enemy of the children in the house of the Lord. But we are armored. We have the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteous living. We have our loins gird with the truth. The inner man is gird with the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We have the, our feet shod with this gospel. And we have the shield of, 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 of faith and a sword of the spirit. And that's who God has made us. Somebody, uh, by the way, needs to mute. I don't know, I don't know who you are. If you're not unmuted, go ahead and, and, and mute again. And so we are armored. We have the power of prayer. And we have the power of holy lives that God has given us to live. When God wants to point out Christ to any man or woman, he's going to send them to you. And so do not let any desire uh, that we have or, or any voice that, 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 that puts anything before us other than the man Jesus Christ, do not give it credence and do not give that voice heed. Heed only the voices that keep Christ first and foremost with no agenda whatsoever. And that's hard work today because there's a lot of voices and there's a lot of agenda. Let it not be so in your life. And finally, finally, I've said this before, I'm going to say it again. Be careful of rejecting a message or a method because you don't agree with it. Be careful about that. Be careful about that because here we have Ahab as a picture, and none of us are any better than Ahab. <clears throat> Without the Lord, none of us are better than Ahab. But it's a stern warning, I think, the church today, which has fallen off, much of the church has fallen off to the left hand and to the right, listening to voices that aren't from heaven and following men and women who obviously and clearly, clearly aren't godly. Um, and it is, it, is, it is probably the most painful thing as a minister in my life to watch so much of the church you know, where I've spent and been laboring for years, you know, follow after men and women who are obviously evil people. It's just, it's, I, I can't even wrap my brain around it, but I will not stand back and, and say nothing because we have to be careful that we don't do the same thing. 
and and that we follow Jesus Christ very clearly. And when we're corrected about these things, when we're corrected about them, that we say, thank you, God, for correcting me. Because I was beginning to wander off after influences and voices that aren't Christ. So here, here, let me give you some instruction. In the house, in the house, the more attention that you, that you pay to the worship, the corporate worship, as well as the personal worship, the corporate worship, um, the fellowship of believers, your consistency and your presence and your giving and your serving, the more pleasing you are to God. Let me prove that to you. I prove that to you through the scriptures. Uh, if you read through the, the, the kings and the, the history of the in the Old Testament, there's one difference. There's one thing, rather, uh, uh, that stands out about the good kings as opposed to the evil kings. The one thing, because all the good kings weren't the same. They were all different men. They, they, they had different levels of intimacy with God. They weren't all, you know, it's not all one white hats and black hats. The thing, the difference between the good kings, the kings that the Bible says were good kings and the kings that weren't, the one thing that the good kings had in common was the attention they paid to worship, the attention that they paid to the temple, the attention that they paid to the priesthood, the attention that they paid to to worship and devotion to God, the attention that they paid to building up the house of the Lord. That is the common thing about every single good king. They all went back and reestablished and, and uh, uh, the, the, the place and the importance um, uh, the, in, the, in the presence of worship, every one of them did. Every one of them came to the Lord according to the law of Moses and paid attention to the Lord uh, to his house. Every one. And the reason David is the greatest of all kings <laughs> is because God set him up and set him up uh, to set up Solomon who would build the temple of the Lord. And David's attention to worship is what to this day. To this day makes his name one of the most prominent names in the history of the world. And that's true of you. Every single Christian that I know that is healthy and that is moving forward in God is committed to the local church, committed to a group of believers and committed to a group of believers with whom they fellowship and whom they live life. And the second is Every single believer that I know is going forward in God and is armored against all the voices of the world, all those lying spirits, is committed to God and his word. It has a rock solid, solid, consistent commitment to the scriptures. Personally, devotionally, they study and read and receive according to the scriptures. It's the only way, beloved, to stay encouraged. It's the only way to keep your head up. It's the only way to stay on the path. You can't do it, can't do it well without being in the word. And then finally, your conversation with God. You know, it's, it's much, much, <laughs> you'll be much, much better at recognizing voices and the spirit of them, the nature of them, when you talk to God and you hear him talk to you. Prayer is not just you speaking to God, because when you speak to God, he speaks to you and he speaks sweetly and he speaks kindly and he listens and he hears and you say, I'm not very good at prayer and, and, and uh, I don't pray enough. I don't know a single praying person that thinks they pray enough or that they're good at prayer. But you pray because it is who you are. It's not even what you do. Paul says, pray without ceasing. There's no way to do that unless prayer is just who you are. I'm not even myself without prayer because I have become, my life has become a prayer. I talk to God about everything all the time. And therefore, I recognize his voice because I talk to him. The reason so many Christians do a poor job of recognizing God's voice and separating it from the enemy's voice it's because they don't have a relationship with God that's conversant. And it's very important for me that you be conversant with God himself. Not just with me, but with God first and foremost. And I just come alongside of what God is doing and saying in your life. And that you understand the word of God because, and I'm just confirming what you already know. 
and and you are, are have already committed yourself to the house of the Lord, whether it be the Father's house or wherever else God sends you. So wherever you go, first thing you're going to do is you're going to find a church. It's just what you do, because you have made up your mind to be in the house of the Word in the closet. And if you do, beloveds, you will not be in your head, which is where so many Christians are. And I speak of what I know. I speak of what the Lord has shown me. And I speak with the authority he's given me. Be careful because there's some Ahab in all of us that wants to hear what we want to hear and wants to do what we want to do. And we'll even say God told us to do it or God said it to me. I've, I've seen that. But beloveds, there are those who really truly know God and hear God and know the truth and walk in it. Let that be said of you. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for opening um, our hearts and our minds to the word of God, a prophetic word that leads us to the cross. Every prophetic word leads us to Jesus because Jesus Christ is the spirit, the essence of all prophecy. He is the point of all prophecy. He's the purpose of all prophecy. Any prophecy that doesn't settle on the man, Jesus Christ, is not prophecy but lies and foolishness. Dear God, let us not be caught up in those things because you have made us wise according to your word, according to your wisdom. And you have brought us, dear God, to the place where we realize that on our knees is the most high place, down at your feet, O oh Lord. So there we know we will always hear clearly. We will always know what thus saith the Lord. And when we don't, we will hearken to the voice of those with whom we fellowship and who love you the way we do and who follow after you. And we will encourage each other in the things and the ways of the Lord because you have saved us, you have set us apart, sanctified us. And dear God, of those that you have won to yourself, you will lose not one. Not one of us will wander off because we will hold on to you and what you have said and who you are according to your word. Now we bless you, Lord. Lead us in the way we should go this week. God. And when we get together again, maybe said of us that we've been at peace with every single man and woman as it pertains to us and everything we can possibly do to walk in peace and to walk in quietness and to mind our own business and to do according to your leading. Everything that we can do, we have done. We've committed to doing so that when we come together again and we have a praise, we have a testimony of the goodness of our Lord who is faithful. May we be faithful, Father God to the one who is most faithful, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, thank you. We open our hearts to you. Live the life of Christ through us. Magnify the Lord through us. We humble ourselves and we are glad just to be in the family. Thank you for these things today and understanding in them in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen, beloveds. If you got a shout, now's the time to give it. Go ahead and unmute and give God the shout he deserves. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Does anybody uh does anybody have an an, an amen, a, a quick amen of anything amen. they heard today that's helpful? Or you think might be helpful to anyone else? Anybody have that? If you if you do, just we'll take it. Just raise your hand, and Jack will recognize you. What did you hear that spoke mommy. directly to you? Okay, sorry. Quick second. I want to make sure first everyone is muted. Let me show myself, and we'll go to gallery view. Um, please, yeah, raise your hand, <laughs> <laughs> Pastor Sue. I see you here. I'll add you um, and ask you to unmute, and you're good to go. Um, just when you shared the part that uh, Micaiah's word was to save Ahab's life, but he couldn't hear it. Um, just the intensity of that hit me, I think, uh, unlike any time before, uh, that there are matters of, of life and death. And if we're not if we're only hearing what we want to hear, the consequences uh, can be severe. And in the case of Ahab, it was. Thank you, sweetie. Thank you, Pastor Amen. Suzanne. Hmm. Anyone um, else? Anything you, anything you want to share about what you just heard? Oh, I see Constance. And then Cody, you'll be after Miss Constance here. 
me add you and ask you to unmute. And, okay, you're good to go. Um, I just, something that's got me when I heard, um, be careful of rejecting the method or a method that God is using that you don't agree with. And that just stopped me for a moment because I know during this particular season, because of the length of time that he's taking to do what he wants to do, um, something simple as having to continue um, fellowshipping on Zoom. Mm -hmm. That came to my mind and was like, oh, oh, oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> as it continue because he hasn't given a date yet and said now you, this is where it's going to be a little different and so your mm -hmm. all fellowship is becoming on zoom and immediately there's no 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 and so <laughs> that just stuck with me. it's embarrassing but it stuck with me it's like okay okay no don't, don't, I don't want to reject anything. I don't want to reject. So I need to be careful in that area. That's, that's real. Thank you, Constance. That's real and that's current. Uh, and it's uh, for some people, it's a matter of controversy, but uh, it's not for us. Um, we will we listen for the Lord. We always have, and we will move when He says move. And and that that's no that says absolutely nothing. No judgment or opinion even on what anyone else is doing. Um, you know, you know, God bless, you know, the decisions that are made in, in, in the local church. Um, and, and even when they're, they're different decisions, so let us not, let's not judge each other. Let us, uh, let's be obedient to what God is doing where he's put us. Uh, thank you, Constance. And that's not only when it comes to, it, 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 you're, you're right, that, that's a very right now thing. Uh, but that it's really broader than, it's, it's broader than that because there'll be other issues. And there's so many places where we could go our own way or do according to our own counsel when God calls us to humble ourselves and to just be still and know that he's the Lord. And in and, and, uh, and my experience, he'll, you know, he, he, he moves when he's ready to move and he'll move you when he's ready to move. You, you know, don't get ahead of God. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a not a good place to be. <laughs> I think the Willis is, Cody. Yes. Yeah, and you here? I'm asking to unmute. Okay, you're good to go. Thank you. Yeah, uh, Pastor, I, I'm just encouraged that um, the truth will cost you in this life. You know, um, I think about the fact that Micaiah, uh, uh, you know, he, he uh, probably didn't ask for that meeting. I'm sure he didn't ask for that meeting. <laughs> and uh, because he told the truth, he ended up in prison. And, and, and obviously, he's not alone um, in that all throughout the scriptures, there's injustice in the face of truth. And so I'm just encouraged that um, these are things as saints, as, as spirit-filled sons and daughters of God, that uh, we will face. And um, we need to be prepared for that. We need to be prepared for the fact that justice belongs to the Lord. And um, as, as you said earlier, and, and, and you just said, you know, God moves in his timing. And so um, I, I, you know, um, even just recently for me, just having to deal with just, just things in the grocery store. And, and I was, I, I, I had to go to court again on, on Thursday. Um, it's stressful, you know, stressful. It's, it's, it's hard uh to to just um be firm and in, in what is right and telling the truth and and um it's even harder knowing that you might not get the outcome that you deserve you might not get the outcome that is right uh, but i'm just reminded that justice belongs to the lord and just as as um, um, many of his saints um didn't receive the promises of god in this life uh uh, you know, ju the uh, uh, judgment day will come uh, for everybody, as, as the Bible says. And so these are things that we have to leave in his hands, and we have to continue to worship him and trust him and stand for the truth uh, all the way till the end, just as the scripture says, he who endures till the end will be saved. 
And so that's just really encouraging for me. Um, you know, it's encouraging for me to see uh, yet again, uh, and, you know, um, injustice in the face of truth. But um, that's okay because uh, God is good. Amen. Thank you, Cody. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank Anyone you. Anyone else? Um, let me. I think it's peaches. Oh, I see ahead. peaches. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Here, I'll add you here and then ask you to unmute. Are you good to go? Okay. Thank you, Pastor E, for an awesome message, another awesome message. What's <laughs> one of the things that stood out to me is that God's ways are not our ways, and also knowing that his thoughts, according to the word, is not our thoughts. That was an encouragement to me. There's a situation um, that I've had, that I've been faced with in our family recently, and but it, it involves adult or adult children. And I have to realize that I have to give them to the Lord. And regardless of what I think it is or, or what it sounds like, or even what it looks like, I know that God is in control and that he has a purpose and a plan and have, and I'm resting. And I'm also the scripture where you stated righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost is also an encouragement to me. And it's also been a challenge, but mm -hmm. I'm learning as a mom, I'm still learning and I'm just grateful for the word of God and his peace he has given me, I can honestly say, but um, it's just been such an encouragement through, through the word that the Lord brings through you and today has just really touched me and just the, um, not that the others don't, but mm -hmm. what really stood out is that God's ways are higher than our ways and his thoughts are higher than our, than, than our thoughts. And, and then just growing in the grace of God and, and more faith growing towards the word of God and spending more time in the word of God has just been a very um, learning experience for me, continuing to learn and mm -hmm. knowing that God is there and that he's working it all out. No way. No, doesn't matter what it looks like, but I have to keep mm -hmm. my eye on him. So thank you again, Pastor. Mm -hmm. It's very enlightening, very challenging, and it's helping me with the peace that I've given to the Lord. I've surrendered. I've Good. surrendered, knowing that he's got it all under control. Good, Peaches. Thank you. That's very encouraging for me. Thank you. As, as, as is all of um, your comments, um, the last thing I'll say is that I, this week, it was early this week, I was just feeling a little, you know, um, I'm not sure what word to use. Uh, but just wasn't feeling completely feet on the ground like I like, I like to feel uh, spiritually. And what I realized is that I was word poor. And so, uh, in, in other words, I've been busy with some things and, and just maybe more, I hadn't, I hadn't been drinking and eating the word like I, like I, you know, like I habitually do. Um, and usually, you know, I, I, you know, I average, this is just, a, you know, something to just share with you, maybe it might be helpful. You know, I average, you know, at least five six chapters of the word a day that's just an average of devotional reading it's not it's not my studying and kind of thing i just and i and i hadn't been doing that i had I'd gotten you know uh, of kind of pecking and poking kind of doing drive-through kind of thing with my reading <laughs> you know uh just just happened that life was working out like that and I, and I sat down i opened up the word to the book of philippians and i just ate it and changed everything changed everything it just changed everything. It put me right. It put me right back where I needed to be, and I realized I I, I was not nourishing my spirit the way that I needed to. So I want to say that as an encouragement to, to everyone that's hearing my voice: nourish your spirit. Um, a lot sometimes just out being a little off base, a little little sideways, not feeling the way we like to feel, or being encouraged like we like to be encouraged. A lot sometimes, many times, it just has to do. We don't have enough word in us. And how you live this life without being filled with the word, I don't know. I have no, I have no counsel for that. <laughs> that counsel is to don't do that. Don't try doing this Christian life without a sufficient daily intake of God's word. Well, Pastor, I don't know where to start. Start somewhere. Um, start at Genesis. Start at the beginning. Uh, and pray about it and talk to other friends about it who are reading the scriptures and encourage one another 
and get enough word in you. I tell my brothers all the time, you're a man, you have man-sized problems, you need man-sized word. You need a man, you need to eat like a man. And I say that to my sisters, you have woman-sized issues, not girl-sized issues, that woman-sized issues, you need to eat like a woman. And you need to you need to drink uh, that, that that fresh water and eat that fresh bread and eat a sufficient amount of it um, every day, every single day. We don't have to remind ourselves to eat natural food. Nobody has to encourage you. I don't have to encourage you to, to, to eat natural food, uh, but we do have to encourage each other to eat spiritual food. So uh, eat, eat, beloveds. Uh, uh, you know, just spare sumptuously in the Word of God. And I guarantee you, even today, if you've been feeling a little sideways, uh, uh, I'll lead you to, in, in this. Read the book of Philippians, four chapters. Um, you, you open the book of Philippians, it's like the, the it, it's like you just poured a whole bunch of flowers into the room, and the room smells like like a fresh cut roses, because it is such a sweet fragrance. It's a beautiful, beautiful letter, and it changed everything for me, and helped me get out of my head and get back, you know, uh, on my knees. Uh, so that's uh, that's it, beloveds. I love you all, um, and uh, I hope you have a, a tremendous rest of your 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 weekend. Actually, Sunday is the beginning of the new week, but uh, you have a tremendous uh, Sunday. Uh, enjoy your day, and, and whatever God has set before you, be careful, be be caring, um, uh, be safe, and everything that you do. Uh, do not undersell the fact that that there is this dangerous malady still out there among us who knows if it morphs into another um variant or whatever right? it doesn't control our lives would not let it control our lives at all you know uh, but we live in the realities that god trusts us with and let's do it wisely and be patient be still be still in my opinion i just share this with you in my opinion it's not a good time to be gathering consistently in a room yet with people if i got to gather with you with a mask on it probably means we shouldn't be gathering Okay, so let's the mask to tell you something. And so let's just be, and you are wise if you wear your mask and you're unwise is probably if you don't, uh, period. Um, so let's be wise. Um, let's just live in the day God has trusted us with. God will trust you with these things. Be trustworthy um, and, uh, and listen to the voices that God has set before you, but they have committed to him and he's the truth. So I love you all. Father, in Jesus name, lead us in the way we ought to go and we will follow. Amen. Amen. Bye, everybody. Bye, Bye. Thank you, Pastor. Bye. 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 Good Good to everybody. See you. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye. In your See the things that you do, be close to you. I wanna walk in your righteousness, be the one that you favor, the one that you bless. I wanna see.